Hi, and we welcome to uh, Business Spotlight Connor Tracy from the Real Estate Wealth yeah. Development Group. He's the Commercial Managing Director there. Welcome, Connor. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming on Business Spotlight today. No problem. Uh, Thanks for having me. Good. So, Connor, tell us a little bit about um, what you do um, in business. You're the Commercial Director, and it's, it's actually also known as the Rude Group. Is that correct? That's right, yeah. So it's the Real Estate Wealth Development Group, REWD, um, but we are known as Rude Group or the, the Rude Boys, as it was uh, started to kind of take over. Um, but yeah, essentially, um, we've always been challenged by the Rude, the REWD part, with yeah. our branding. Um, a lot of people have seen like the lettering, REWD, and a lot of guys call us like the Rewind Group, or, you know, they don't, they don't quite know what it is, but the formal title is Real Estate Wealth Development. Uh, and essentially, we, we are a property investment and development company. Um, we have been, uh, or we are to this date, the, the fastest growing property investment development company in the UK. And um, we've scaled from zero to, to over 250 properties within a three year period. Wow. And what do you put that success down to, Connor? Uh, different things, really. Uh, so it's myself um, and the, the two co founders of the group, uh, Laurie Duncan and Alex Robertson. They kind of they come from a corporate background. Um, Alex is very much like the the accountancy. He's a, he's a chartered accountant, um, mm -hmm. but he worked in the oil and gas industry. Uh, and essentially, what Alex was brought in to do was to implement systems. He would yep. kind of go into a new site, start formulate the the new team, and then build out a system essentially so that he could walk away from that site and it would run itself. Mm -hmm. And then Laurie was very much business development, same again, oil and gas, um, but he's a really big thinker, uh, like he just goes after these kind of big ambitions. Uh, and I guess I'm just, uh, I'm the property guy. Uh, I've always only ever been property from as soon as I left school, um, since uh, the age of 19. Uh, I was essentially the Scotland's youngest property valuer at that time, and that's all I've ever known. And I'm a, probably, I would say, an equal blend between Alex and Laurie in terms of uh, analytical thinking and being more ambitious in, in terms of sales-driven uh, for, for growth, which is ultimately why I'm responsible for the growth of the whole group. Okay. Sounds uh, interesting. And what an amazing accolade to know that you're the fastest growing uh, real estate company. That's, you know, quite a feather for your cap, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people in the beginning. So we, we originally done 200 properties in less than two and a half years. Um, so literally from a stand and start where we grew to, to over 200 and a lot of people don't believe us um, which is which is interesting there's a lot people would rather doubt these kind of big achievements rather than believe that it can be possible and, and be done um, so now actually one of the core businesses that we do is we, we support others in growing their own residential portfolio using our system yeah. uh, and we've had multiple clients come from no property background and growing 20 unit portfolios within 12 months um you know for, for themselves not everyone has aspirations to kind of be as big as what we want to be um but i guess it was just a bit of the snowball effect once we got mm -hmm. started and we, we kind of used this system that worked we just used it a bit more and then all of a sudden it kind of grew uh, much bigger than we probably set out to in the beginning. And is it because of the systems? Do you think that's what's accelerated the growth is having good systems in the business? Systems is a key part. Um, it definitely plays a fundamental place, but everything that we do, we kind of put down to the mindset. Um, nothing in any business is easy. Certainly not in property because there's so many different variables. You know, you've got the market conditions, you've got interest rate challenges, you've got legislation, tenants, all of that kind of stuff. So you have to be equipped mentally to deal with these challenges and push forward a lot. Uh, and we are challenged on a big scale kind of every, every day pretty much. Um, so resilience and kind of just that belief that we want to be more than average i think is kind of what was at the core of why red group exists you know yeah. we wanted to do something there was a fundamental key parts to the business as to why we basically wanted to do property and, and, and why buy to let you know why we wanted to become landlords yeah and one of those key things is the the massive undersupply of housing in scotland you know, every all the properties we own are specifically in scotland 
the UK as a whole has a massive undersupply of housing. Mm-hmm. But Scotland is where we're all from. It's the legal system that we all understand. And essentially, we're, we're kind of taking up properties that are in poor condition. We're, we're renovating them and then we're, we're offering them back to the rental market to provide quality rental homes to the people of Scotland. Yep. Um, you know, we've got a lot of long-term contracts with the council and the government directly because mm-hmm. they don't have enough property. They know that we're in a position where we are buying a lot to then be able to produce. So they're actually supplying us with the tenants before we even own the properties at, at this point mm-hmm. um, because they just can't get enough to to, to, to house everyone, basically. Yeah. So we felt like that we were playing a real key role in what we wanted to do. But mm-hmm. ultimately, it also came down to we wanted more for ourselves in terms of our freedom to kind of pick and choose what we've done for a living. Yeah. And there is huge financial gain from being inv- invested in property, whether you're serious about it or not, just yeah. by owning property, it, that there's massive advantages to that. Um, so, yeah, it was to solve a kind of core problem that, that we recognised existed. Yep. financially benefit for ourselves and our families and, and create genuine generational wealth um, yep. through that process. Um, and yeah, it, it kind of just stuck from that point of we think this needs solved. We think we can solve it with doing it this way. Mm-hmm. And then I guess I just taking that leap and, and trying to apply uh, what we thought we knew at the time um, yeah. and then learned as we, we kind of, we grew pretty much. And so can I go back to, to mindset there you mentioned? Is that something that's innate, do you think, or is it something you work on? Something we work on every day, um, actually. You know, the, I think more so there are people who are equipped, you know, with stronger mindset and a hunger to kind of achieve and, and overachieve, if you like, which is kind of how we see ourselves, the three of us. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are others who maybe find it more challenging, you know, and they're kind of happy with being comfortable and uh, and, and I definitely feel that it's easy to become like that. Um, you know, you can very easily say, like, oh, you know, that that's way too hard. You know, I don't want to go through that pain again. So, you know, maybe we don't want 200 properties. That's too mental. Maybe we'll just kind of stick to 10. You know, yeah. we'll just go back to 10. But the reality is it's the same headaches of 10. It's the, it's the same process. It's the same challenges. It's just more units you know more zeros or, or whatever however you want to work it but yeah yeah we, we constantly have to not reset but take account of ourselves come away from things and then you know refocus and, and kind of come at it again um so mindset's an ongoing uh, challenge that we work on and is there anything specifically you watch or listen to or any rituals that you do that help you with that so for me and me personally, it's about really getting kind of consistent structures in place. So it's simple things like I've got, I live in uh, Steps in Glasgow, but our headquarters is in Grangemouth. So yeah. it's maybe like a 25, 30 minute commute. But mm-hmm. each time I do that every morning when I do that travel, it's also it's always an audible book of some kind, whether it's a self-development book or a business related book. But what mm-hmm. that does is it puts thoughts and ideas into my mind before I even touch down into the office. Yep. On the way back, I don't, like if I'm doing the commute back from the office, it doesn't need to be an audiobook. I listen to music, you know, I kind of, that's kind of winding down at that point to, to kind of cool down, go back to family life. But definitely mm. in that transition from house to the office, it has to be something that's going to kind of set my mind up for that day. Yep. And that works really for me. And it's really simple. I'm talking like 25, 30 minutes, but getting that uh, learning process of positive energy into my mind before my day kicks off works. Mm-hmm. Um, Laurie, uh, business partner Laurie, he's got a mental routine. Uh, you know, he's a meditation, stretching, cold showers, up at half four in the morning mm-hmm. kind of guy. Alex and I are more like five, half five. We get up, we've got our own structure, but it's maybe not as crazy as, as what his is. But mm-hmm. he he's tested doing it. And not doing it, and he sees massive benefit and in, in sticking to that routine. Mm. So uh, I think for us, but all our routines are different. But the point is that we all have one. Yeah, yeah. You Sounds know, like and, good advice. Yeah, and anytime we speak to to people, it's like, okay, you don't have to do the cold showers and and all of that thing if it doesn't work for you. Try it, 
we definitely say try it. If it does work, implement it into to what you do. But finding something that's got structure just allows you to get some grip of the chaotic life that, that we all lead, um, you know, before we, we kind of have to go into the things that we can't control. And is this this structure you're describing, and I like the fact that it's got to be right for the person, so we're not all the same. Is this something that you share with your clients or you encourage them to do? Absolutely, yeah. So like I say, one of the main things that we're doing is we're supporting others who want to grow their own residential uh, buy-to-let portfolios. And a lot of people just have this misconception or a, a wrong understanding that it can actually be achievable for them because yeah. maybe they think that, oh, well, I don't know how it all works. Uh, you need to have loads of money to be able to get started. You know, so many different hurdles that they think it's just not possible. I've got a full-time job. I've got kids. I've got family. And at, at the end of the day, they're all just excuses. Mm -hmm. And there is a format that how you can take what are real challenges and they're, they're real hurdles, but you can still make things work. Yeah. But we go back to the basics when it comes to that. And it's about, okay, well, look at what how you're spending your time every day. Yeah. Where are you allocating your time? You know, because most people will have a lot of wasted time every day that they could, if they really wanted to, use in a more productive way. So mm -hmm. we, we definitely do. We, we start off with our, our model that we, got, we, we teach is called the Rude Pro model. Yeah. And essentially it starts with foundations. Foundations are mindset and the corporate structure of, of the business, how that's set up, how it's going to perform, and then systems, which is basically how you can implement systemization so that the business can run itself with minimal input from you. Yeah. And then it's deals and finance, essentially how you're going to buy the properties and where you're going to find them and the types of deals that you're going to buy. So, but it all, none of it works without that foundational level of getting your mind right and putting things in place. Yeah, because I was going to ask, you know, if I'm sitting here and I'm, I, let's say I own four or five buy to lets, yeah, you know, why would I then come and work with you guys rather than just do it on my own? But is this, this system you're talking about, is that the point of difference? Multiple reasons, really. I mean, the, we were at that point where we were buying, we were saving up money as a deposit. We were buying then a property on a, a normal residential buy to let mortgage. Yeah. And then it's okay, average deposit was say £25,000. Save £25,000. We buy one property, we're getting paid, you know, a couple hundred pounds a month or whatever from, from that property. It's then going to take time to then save again to get yeah. £25,000 again to, to then buy another one. And it's really like, unless you're, you know, a, a multi, multi millionaire and you've got this infinite pot of cash that, that keeps coming, you're going to grow really slowly to be able to actually get any benefit from investing in property. And we are massive believers of, yes, we all, we all have kids, right? we've all got uh, young kids, that we want to be able to leave something for them when we are no longer here. We want yeah. to build that for them. But also, we want to benefit from it ourselves just now as well. So mm. I don't want to wait until we're retirement age before we can actually cash in on all our full life's work, hard work. Yeah. So that kind of growing slowly thing, we just thought well, there has to be a better solution to that. Uh, and it comes in the form of the correct strategy and how to implement that. So essentially what we do is we, we show people how you can unlock that barrier and be able to actually grow much quicker. So on average, our clients are going from nothing to 10 properties inside 12 months. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's for people who have no property experience whatsoever. We've had multiple clients come to us and then all of a sudden, you know, they, they've bought three properties in, inside a single month. Yeah. And it's then about how we can scale that further. And a lot of people kind of come to us hoping and believing that what we say is true, but not fully convinced. Yeah. Then they start working with us. Then they do their first deal. Then they do their next one. Then they do their next one. And then all of a sudden the penny drops and goes, right, okay, now, now I'm in. Now, now I get it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's kind of key differences uh, for why people should work with us. It's not just the support. It's the different, I guess, investment strategy and the system that we teach allows you to, to genuinely scale with kind of minimal input. Um, you know, everything we've done, we've done with none of our own money. Um, and we don't just mean private investment. Everyone always thinks it means that we're going and chatting the neighbor's door and saying, can, can you give me a loan or whatever? Mm. doesn't work like that. There's multiple finance strategies. But everything starts from that foundational 
platform that I said earlier. And within that comes education. That's the first thing we say is if you don't know how to do it, how can you possibly go and apply anything? So yeah. we, we kind of focus on the education at the beginning. Then we offer the support. Mm -hmm. And then the kind of main key thing that we provide is we actually provide the investment opportunities to our clients. So we are finding them heavily discounted properties off market that allows them to, to buy into their portfolio and actually use the strategy and the system that we've taught them. Right. Okay. And how interesting have the last six months been, I guess, you know, six months ago, you know, Liz Truss was the, became the prime minister in the UK and that had a big ripple effect in many areas. How did that impact you? We probably had a bit more hair uh, before the last <laughs> six months. Uh, I would probably say what we said was last year was our most challenging year, you know, in total. And then coming to the end of it, we felt we made a lot of big, big decisions, um, core decisions to the group and how our businesses were going to function, what we wanted to do. Um, refocused, basically. You know, we, mm -hmm. we kind of started with buy to let we grew a big portfolio. Then we went into developments. So we basically bought a lot of uh, unused office space in the high street in Falkirk. Yeah. So at one point we had six of them. And the plan was to basically repurpose those buildings and convert them into residential. So we're going to offer them as, as flats. Um, and through experience of going through that process with one of the projects, we basically just realized that one, it wasn't really what we wanted to do. And two, there was easier ways that we could gain benefit and provide ultimately this product of quality housing to the market without going through all of that hassle and all mm. those cash flow pressures that that type of business brings. Yeah. Um, so we made a lot of big decisions to re-strategize our business to protect us long term, but, but ultimately still service our customer, which our customers really are tenants. It's the yep. people who are going to get the benefit of the properties once they're they're all renovated in good condition. Um, and we just felt that that type of business um, wasn't where we, we wanted to, kind to of go. go. So we've got one of the projects that's just about finished. We bought offices and we've turned them into six luxury apartments. That, that's really cool. Re really good project. And we've learned a lot. Um, but that business now is going a different direction. And then we made those decisions and then obviously inflation kicked in and the interest rates and everything started going a bit crazy. Mm. So us as a business, um, these numbers might not be relevant to the audience or anything, but for example, we were paying a rate of 4.5% of January of last year. Yep. To this date, as of this month, we're currently paying 8%. So that's a cash flow swing of over £20,000 a month to us. Yeah, it's massive. And, and cost. <laughs> so I mean that's scary for anybody but for us it was just like it's part of the nature of our business mm -hmm. um, and our model was focused to be resilient against that okay we're yeah. not making as much income as what it was 12 months ago but we're fine with that because of the types of properties we bought what we're doing with them and, and ultimately just our strategy across the business um, but it hasn't been easy yeah. Is, is the point you know but yeah i guess it, i guess nothing worth having is going to be easy nicely put so do you are you still buying your own properties or is everything you're buying now going to your your clients no we do both uh, we're massive uh, believers in learning from people who do what they say they do so we never went into the training space in terms of working with other people to invite them to learn from us uh, until we reached a point where we felt we were credible to even talk about it. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got 10 years experience in the industry. The guys have been buying properties for 10 years. We've got, we own over 250 of our own. Mm -hmm. We've run a developments business for a couple of years by this point. We've got our own building company as well. So we had a lot of experience to share yeah. um, before we, we really offered the opportunity for anybody to come and learn from us. Um, you know, we had a lot of people just asking in general, but it had to be a case of that we were confident what we were telling them was something that would actually provide value and that they could listen to us, go and apply it and get a result. And that, and that's what we're, we're all about now. Um, we, we launched the, the Real Property Community in January, um, mm -hmm. which is essentially for people either looking to get started in property or already in it, that's looking for a space that is only full of 
real investors with real experience who want to achieve real results. That, that's essentially our tagline, and it ties in with the, the real estate wealth development model. So that word real was kind of massively powerful uh, in our group um, yeah. for multiple reasons, because a lot of people come and see us, and I've not done it in this interview because I was conscious of maybe I'm not allowed, but we swear and all that a lot. And uh, we're just real guys, and everyone here are just real people within the group, but we yeah. do have massive ambitions. Um, so that, that, like I say, that word is massively powerful, but not everybody has the same beliefs as what, what we do, and there's plenty of people out there who talk the talk and you know might not necessarily be what they say they are. Yeah, I, I, yeah, and I think you know everyone will have come across somebody like that. I think in in the estate agency or the estate agency world, the, the real estate world. But clearly, yeah. you guys have got put a lot of distance between yourselves and and that kind of um, business with what you've achieved. You know, you've you've got so much growth and um, quality um, homes that you're providing for people behind you. So it's just residential. There's no commercial aspect to your business. Is that correct? The co the commercial aspect was really just the the conversions and the developments business, buying up these kind of old office spaces and then uh, looking to repurpose them. Within that, though, we did buy. So we had a couple of retail stores up in the high street that came with the development space up above. Yeah. Um. So we had like the cash converters up in Falkirk High Street. We, we had the pound stretchers there as well, but we've since sold them off. So at, at this moment, we, we don't own any commercial, and we have no aspirations really to to go into that commercial space. So given that the you know everything you've done with the big ambition and the big ideas, how many years have you been going now? Uh, Technically four years, but really we've only been active as Rood Group for three. Yeah. Okay. So what what do the next three years bring then? What's the ambition? Where are you going to take this? More growth um, is the short answer. Uh, we've maybe a different view as to how we're going to grow that. Um, we originally said we set this aspiration of having a thousand units. Yeah. Um, we don't really know why. Um, I guess nice, it just nice sounded like <laughs> it sounded like a big scary round number. Um, it started off at 100, then we did that really quite quickly. We bought 82 in one go, basically bought a big portfolio and it was like, right, okay, maybe that was too small. So we then said 200, six months later, we'd smash through that, that 200. Um, then we said, okay, 500. And last year, uh, we had a massive portfolio in legals, um, which was 100 units. And, and it was going to take us to essentially um, 500 within probably 18 months. So at that point, we were like, right, this is getting a bit silly now. You know, let's set a crazy target that mm. we, we might never reach. So we said a thousand. As we've learned, as we grow, we're less focused on this number of property. We're probably more focused on, yes, we want to keep accumulating. And yes, if we hit that thousand, that would be amazing. Yeah. But we want to focus on the quality of the property that we're actually providing. Because you have to appreciate, you know, you buy 100 properties in one go. That's a lot of refurbs that you need to go through. It's a lot of management. Yeah. It's a lot of tenants to service. It's a lot in one go. Yeah. And standards will slip. You know, there's no doubt about that. You, you take on too much capacity and, and you're not going to be 100% in, in, in what you do. And we're not okay with that, mm. I guess. So we stopped focusing on the big number. And... We wanted to grow the group in different directions that was all synergistical to the core of what, what we're doing. Um, yeah. So all the businesses we've got, like I mentioned, we've got the building company, we've got the developments company, we've got the property training and sourcing company. We recently bought last year uh, the Blacklock Resort, which is in Lime Rig in Falkirk. It, right. was, origin it was originally a fishery. Um, we bought it as a fishery, but it's seven and a half acres of land on the on the side of the lock, essentially. Nice. And we have the exclusive rights to the water. Um, so we can use the water for fishing. And we've recently added uh, water sports like pedalos, uh, paddle boarding, uh, kayaks, that kind of thing during mm -hmm. the summer. Mm -hmm. And we're just about to launch planning permission to put a, a restaurant directly on the, the, the banks of the lock, essentially. And uh, ultimately, we want to build uh, kind of holiday lodges nice. uh, for, for short-term accommodation. So I guess it's a, an add-on to this buy-to-let where we want to keep them, but we're not looking to sell the lodges off. 
but we're just going to rent them on a kind of night by night basis rather than uh, on, a, on a standard monthly basis. Um, so that was like a cool property related project. Mm. But really the way we thought about it and why we set out to get, do a business like that was we're doing all of this stuff so that we have more free time and more money to do things with our family. Yeah. What are we going to do with that? We're probably going to go and visit these types of holiday resorts anyway. Yeah. So wouldn't it be cool to have one and, and be a part of other people enjoying and benefiting coming to something that you've built? Yeah. Um, so it kind of tied into the core model again. So so we went after that. Um, and then we're looking at different concepts of uh, launching our own auction company, our, our own estate agency. And I guess anything else that just complements the group, but mm. it's all, you can see how they all relate to each other mm-hmm. um, rather than just randomly saying, oh, we're going to go and buy like a, a clothing company or something. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't tie into what we do and we get no experience of it. Yeah. And what are the biggest challenges that you face? I guess the external factors are always a big thing in property, the things that we can't control, um, mm. legislation, um, tenants not paying rent, <laughs> um, maintenance uh, problems happening, you know, things happen to properties. We had a big fire a couple of years ago, what full block of our flats went up in flames, you know, things like that. They are huge impacts on your business, but you can't control them. So external factors like that are always going to be a challenge. But having staff, I mean, that's a, a, a daunting uh, thing. Mm. Uh, you know, we all came from being employed, you, you know, um, I guess you think things differently. Like I was a sales guy, um, always one of the, you know, the top performer everywhere I went. And then yeah. you, you do always get that feeling. Laurie talked about it as well. You see the amount of business you're bringing in and you see what you believe at that time, like a marginal gain on a, a commission front or, or whatever. And you think, why am I doing this for someone else and, and, and not yeah. myself? yeah. Then you go and do it for yourself and you go, ah, okay, there's maybe a lot of factors I've never you considered think about. That, that the previous boss was was dealing with that, that you didn't have to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, being an entrepreneur and a business owner and having staff isn't is definitely not for everyone. I can assure you of that. Um mm. but it's massively rewarding. Um and and I think we are more than capable. And I, I believe that I was always kind of set out to be that type of person who would provide for others um you know they put the work in they're not saying that you know i'm carrying them or, or anything like that yeah i just mean that creating opportunity for people i felt was always something i was going to do um i don't know if alex and laurie necessarily had the same belief but they've landed into it and um i that that will always be a challenge you know because business is difficult and if a business doesn't do well it affects people's lives so, yeah. you know, that, that yeah. that's always a, a scary thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, congratulations on the huge success you've, you've had so far. I'm sure you'll have more to come. Um, if you were to give some advice to anyone starting out in business or maybe who's not as advanced in their business journey as you, what would it be, Connor? Do something that you have genuine interest and passion for, I would say, because it is hard and it is massively challenging. And if you don't actually believe in it, that, that that's something you want to get up and do every day, you, you definitely won't succeed. So it isn't maybe about what the business does, but it's more about what that the purpose of having that business can do for you. You know, people talk about your why or, or your, your reason behind things. I think that needs to be solid um, in order to kind of go ahead and attack business and, and genuinely reap the benefits from it. You know, it has to be a good enough reason to get up and go every day. Good advice. Well, look, thanks for sharing your expertise today, Connor, and we wish you well. Uh, But thanks for being on Business Spotlight. No problem. Thanks a lot, everyone.